Hi folks, I'm going to show everybody the inside of a solenoid and how they work. So here's a new one. And here's one that stopped working. So what I did is I ground off with a grinder what's holding it together. And all I did basically was remove this lip here you see. That's where the cap is basically pressed on and conceals everything on the inside of it. So I just took a grinder and removed that so it was able to separate itself. Okay, so let's begin with this here. Here's the top cap. So here's the two contact posts you can see here on top. And then on the inside of it, there's the two contact points. That's actually going to give you the contact when, it's, when the solenoid is working. In this case here, it'll either be an open contact or a closed contact. So for this six pole solenoid, there's both. There's a normally closed and a normally open contact. And on this particular one, the top side is the normally closed and the two side ones are normally open meaning normally open that current will not travel through to this side it's an open contact so what that means is that you can see here on the underside of it the top side this one here is normally closed meaning that current will travel through this without activating the solenoid itself and how it works is this inside here's the other contact bear with me I have a don't have a tripod set up I'm just working with one hand here so here is the inner workings of it you can see that spring that spring makes this push upward so when it's pushing upward that is what's closing this contact and that's the reason why it's closed it's because you have a full you can see the contacts going across from post to post that allows the current to go through post to post because of this circular shaped piece of copper. Now and the reason why these these other two terminals posts is a normally open contact Is because this is, has an upward pressure which is not touching these inner pieces which would make it need to be touching to have the contact needed for the current to flow through from one post to the other post so how that one works and gets engaged is when 12 volts depending on a solenoid but this particular one is 12 volts power leads engage a coil of wire that's down inside which is down inside there you can see that uh, little hole get a pen here and beneath this there's a wrapping of wire copper wire and when when 12 volts has been applied to that coil it turns it into a magnet a very strong magnet and when that becomes a magnet the spring pressure the spring here loses its strength and ends up collapsing and what when, when that happens goes inside that hole So when that happens, this here gets forced downward, 
which it engages these side terminals as being a closed contact. And then the top portion, these terminals here, end up becoming an open contact. And that's how it works. So as one is going to be normally open and the other will be normally closed, that's how they switch themselves over is when that coil of wire down inside that becomes activated with current, it turns into a magnet. And this piece here is steel. And it just forces this down. Like a magnet has pulling power. It just forces it down. And you can hear that. That's making contact for these other two posts. When you remove that current that's feeding that copper coil and allowing it to become a magnet well it's releasing the magnetism and that's when this spring gangs power and this here wants to push itself upward which is allowing the top posts to be a closed contact Now that coil, the 12 volt power, as you can see here it has one lead and you can see this one here has two leads. Well the reason for the two is that these two here are isolated, they're, so they're all by themselves. The 12 volts or the 24 volts, whatever the uh, rating is on the solenoid, these two posts here are independent of the rest of them. As, as of on this one here, it's not. So, it's not. It's intertwined with, I can actually tell you which one it's intertwined with. It's actually intertwined with the body. So the body becomes the ground. And the post that sticks up becomes the positive. So the body is the negative and the post is the positive for this one. For this one here, it's the opposite. The body does not have any meaning to it at all other than bolting it onto something to hold it down. And this becomes your positive and your negative. It actually doesn't really matter which way it goes, positive or negative. It's energizing that copper coil inside here which allows it to become magnetized and switch its contacting whether it be these here be closed or open or whether it would be the top portion of it be closed or open as it sits by itself the top is normally closed and the sides are normally open so again normally open meaning current cannot travel through and normally closed means current will travel through when the magnet becomes magnetized and it pulls that little plunger down inside which is this piece it reverses itself so now the side posts become closed and the top posts become open now in some solenoids where you don't have the four bigger terminals, you only have the two terminals. I don't have one to show you, but more than likely those two terminals will be normally open. And to close it, you would have to add the current, whether it be the 12 or 24 volts to magnetize the coil inside. And then when the magnetized coil inside loses that magnetism by a switch or a key or whatever it may be to disengage the power going to these two points here the two posts would remain back to a open 
So I'm pretty sure I explained just about everything there is to know about one of these things. This one here is no longer any good. The coil itself down inside is burnt out. So I'm not just going to dispose of it. I'm actually going to remove these uh, bolts here, nuts, and remove them copper lugs. These ones here do not have silver on them. They're just a copper contact. Some of them have a silver contact. So it's basically copper with some silver on top. It stops and prevents sticking, welding together. And this one here is the same. It's just copper. There is no silver contact points. And this little washer type thingamajiggy here. That's actually allowing that um, openness and closeness to take place is just copper itself. Looks like brass though. Pretty sure it's just copper though. So this this is the, the, the key basically of the solenoid itself. Which is allowing the contact to be open or closed. Open or closed. And you know a little relay like these. They're similarly the same. If I could pop the cap off of this and show you. This. But these are normally normally open. And then when you apply power, the 12 volts or 24 volts, depending. And in this case, it would be these two little ones here. That's going to engage that coil to magnetize it, which is going to close the little contact in there to allow current to travel through from this post to this post. And you can see the posts, how big they are on, on this little relay. That's because this little relay here is pretty high in amperage, I believe. Let's see if I can see it. 40 amp. So 40 amps of current can travel through these two contact points. That's why they're so large in size. If it was a little 10 amp relay, these contact points would be a lot smaller. More than likely the size of these ones here. Which are about half the size. But the same idea, that these work exactly the same as one of these do. Or as one of these do. Basically all this is doing is magnetizing the coil inside. Which is creating the magnetism. And it's creating a pulling effect. Pulling effect would the plunger be going down. Which is allowing either a circuit to be open or closed. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you have not, and thank you very much for those that have.